All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Abhishek Mukhopadhyay. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts with people in Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio at 11 a.m. Prime Minister to launch several infrastructure projects in Andaman and Nicobar Islands today. Voting begins in Punjab to elect sarpanch and panch for over 13,000 village panchayats. Bangladesh goes to polls today to elect new parliament. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina seeks a record fourth term. And in cricket, India beat Australia by 137 runs in the Melbourne Test. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in India and abroad in his Man Ki Baat program of All India Radio at 11 a.m. today. It will be the 51st episode of the monthly radio program. It will be broadcast on the entire network of AIR and Doordarshan. The program will also be streamed on the YouTube channels of the Prime Minister's Office, Information and Broadcasting Ministry, AIR and DD News. It will be simultaneously broadcast on AIR's website www.allindaradio.gov.in All India Radio will broadcast the program in regional languages immediately after the Hindi broadcast. The regional language versions will also be repeated at 8 in the evening. The Prime Minister will launch several infrastructure projects in Andaman and Nicobar Islands today. Mr. Modi will visit the Tsunami Memorial at Kar Nicobar where he will lay a wreath and light a candle at the Wall of Lost Souls. The Prime Minister will inaugurate an industrial training institute at Arong and lay the foundation stone of some infrastructure projects. The Prime Minister will also visit the Selula Jail in Port Blair. Talking to media, Andaman and Nicobar Lieutenant Governor Admiral D.K. Joshi stressed the need to create awareness about the importance of Selula Jail in the country's freedom struggle. अंडमान और निकोबार द्वीप समूह का भारत के फ्रीडम मूवमेंट में बहुत ही सिग्निफिकेंट कंट्रीब्यूशन रहा है जो मैं समझता हूं आजकल खास करके युवा पीढ़ी को उसका शायद उतना आभास नहीं है यहां अठारह के बाद से ही लगातार पॉलिटिकल प्रिजनर फ्रीडम फाइटर है पीनल सेटलमेंट के बतौर यहां भेजे जाते रहे थे और उनको कितनी यातनाएं दी गई थी कितना उन्होंने दुख झेला था लगभग अठारह से लेकर के जब तक हमारी आजादी हमको मिली सन सैंतालीस में तब तक तो इसका Our correspondent has more details. In the day, Mr. Modi will lay a wreath at the Martyrs Column at Port Blair. He will hoist the high mast flag at South Point, Port Blair, and pay floral tributes at Statue of Netaji at Marine Park. At Netaji Stadium, the Prime Minister will release a commemorative postal stamp, coin, and first day cover to mark the 75th anniversary of the hoisting of tricolor on Indian soil by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Mr. Modi will also release the innovation and startup policy for Andaman and Nicobar Islands. and inaugurate a 7 megawatt solar power plant and solar village the prime minister will also address a public meeting with the paint sheila air news telly prime minister narendra modi dedicated to the nation the international rice research institute south asia regional center campus in varanasi the center will serve as a hub for rice research and training in south asia Addressing a gathering last evening Mr Modi said the institute will help farmers of the region to develop varieties of paddy which grow in minimum water and have low sugar content and high nutritional value he said the center will play a major role in harnessing and sustaining rice production in the region center vigyan aur takniki se kheti ko labhkari banane ki hamari niti ka hi parinam hai yahan bharat ke liye dhan se judi uttam kismon beejon और दूसरी तकनीकों पर शोध तो होगा ही एशिया और दुनिया के दूसरा देशों के लिए भी यहां समाधान तैयार होंगे काशी में परिवर्तन अब दिखने लगा है दिव्य काशी का स्वरूप अब और भव्य होता जा रहा है माइनॉरिटी अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर मुख्तार अब्बास नकवी हैज कॉल्ड फॉर एजुकेशनल एंड सोशल इम्पावरमेंट ऑफ द वीकर सेक्शन ऑफ द सोसाइटी टू स्टॉप द पोलिटिकल एक्सप्लाइटेशन Mr Nagbi was speaking after laying the foundation stone of a school building at suburban Bandra in Mumbai yesterday. The minister said development without discrimination is the priority of the BJP government. He said scholarships have been provided to over 3 crore 11 lakh students belonging to minority communities including about 60% girl students in the last 3 to 4 years. 
Railway Minister Piyush Goel has said that his ministry will soon approach the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs for clearance of the doubling of the railway line from New Bongaigao to Guwahati via Rongia in Assam. Addressing a review meeting of senior railway officials at Northeast Frontier Railway, NFR, headquarters in Guwahati yesterday, Mr. Goel said, following inauguration of Bogibil Bridge, all efforts should now be towards doubling of railway lines in the region for capacity enhancement. He asked the officials to prepare a plan of action within one week. The minister spoke to State Foreign Minister Parimal Shukla Vedya for ensuring quick permission for soil procurement, which is presently hampering progress of project. This is All India Radio giving you the news for quick news updates around the clock. Follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. You can also log on to our website news on AIR.nic.in. In Punjab, polling has begun to elect Sarpans and Pans for over 13,000 village panchayats amid tight security. The voting started at 8 a.m. and will conclude at 4 p.m. Counting of votes will be taken up after conclusion of the polling. Around 8,000 candidates are in the fray for the post of Sarpans and Pans. Around 4,000 Sarpans and 46,000 Pans have already been elected unopposed. In Meghalaya, divers from the Indian Navy and the NDRF are making all-out effort to rescue 15 miners trapped inside the flooded coal mine in East Jaintia Hills District. National Disaster Response Force NDRF Assistant Commandant Santosh Kumar Singh said rescue teams went inside the mine yesterday to conduct a recce and measure the level of accumulated water as part of the rescue operation. The water level is estimated to be more than 77 to 80 feet in the vertical shaft of the Red Hole coal mine. The mine, located on top of a hillock fully covered with trees, had got flooded when water from the nearby river gushed into it on the 13th of this month, trapping 15 diggers. India submitted its sixth national report to the Convention on Biological Diversity, CBD, yesterday. The report was submitted online to the CBD Secretariat by the Environment Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan during the inaugural session of the 13th National Meeting of the State Biodiversity Boards, SBBs, in New Delhi. Speaking on the occasion, Dr. Harsh Vardhan said India is among the f- first five countries in the world, the first in Asia and the first among the biodiversity-rich mega-diverse countries to have submitted the report. He said India is on track to achieve their biodiversity targets at the national level and is also contributing significantly towards achievement of the global biodiversity targets. Cold wave conditions have intensified in Punjab, Haryana and western Uttar Pradesh. In Punjab, Adampur was the coldest place while Halwara and Bhatinda also braved intense chill recording identical minimum temperatures of 0.6 degrees Celsius yesterday. In Haryana, Hisar was the coldest place at a low of 0.3 degrees Celsius, down six notches against normal limits. Med officials said the ongoing cold wave conditions are likely to continue in the two states over the next few days. Severe cold wave conditions prevail in western Uttar Pradesh with Agra, recording the lowest minimum temperature in the state at 1.7 degrees Celsius yesterday. The Med Office forecast shallow to moderate fog at a few places in the state through the next 24 hours. People in Bangladesh are voting to elect a new parliament. The polling began at 7.30 Indian Standard Time and will conclude at 3.30 p.m. The incumbent Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who heads Awami League Party, is seeking a record fourth term. We have a report. Over 10 crore voters are eligible to exercise their franchise to elect the new parliament of Bangladesh. More than 1,800 candidates are in the fray for 299 seats. Over 6 lakh security persons, including personnel from the Bangladesh Army, Marines and the police, have been deployed to ensure free and fair polling. Nine international organizations and groups, including European Union, the Commonwealth, Sark Human Rights Foundation and a dozen foreign missions in Bangladesh are watching the election with their 188 observers. The foreign observers have reached Bangladesh from a range of countries including India, Australia, Canada and Malaysia. New Delhi has sent three observers at the invitation of Chief Election Commission of Bangladesh. Swati Rakheja, News Desk. UAE and Arab League have condemned roadside bomb attack in Egypt. Three Vietnamese holidaymakers and an Egyptian guide were killed when a roadside bomb hit a tourist bus near the Giza pyramids on Friday. Yesterday, the Egypt police killed 40 LS terrorists in a crackdown after the bomb attack. 
Interior Ministry said authorities had received information that the suspects were preparing a spate of attacks against state and tourist institutions and churches in the country. In cricket, India beat Australia by 137 runs in the third test match at Melbourne this morning to take an unassailable 2-1 lead in the four-match series. Chasing a stiff target of 399, Australia were all out for 261 in the post lunch session after the first session was washed out due to intermittent charge. India took 4.3 overs to capture the final two wickets. Jasprit Bumrah, 3 for 53, finished with a match haul of 9 for 86. He was declared man of the match. Ishan Sharma, 2 for 40, took the final wicket of Nathan Lyon as India won the 150th Test match. In the Premier Badminton League, Rituparna Das continued her unbeaten run as Northeastern Warriors registered the second successive win, thrashing Delhi Dashes at the Sri Chhatrapati Shivaji Sports Complex in Pune last night. 55th rank Rituparna defeated world number 32, Evgenia Kosetskaya of Russia, 13 5 9 15. In another fixture, Pune Seven Aces started the home leg with a 4-3 win over Mumbai Rockets at the league in Pune. The New Services Division of All India Radio is broadcasting its year-end program series. In the series, we will bring you discussions on core sectors and flagship schemes of the Union Government. Today, we bring you an interview with Union Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Minister Radha Mohan Singh. Tune into FM Gold Channel from 9:30 p.m. to listen to the special series. The programs will also be available on our website, newsonair.nic.in. You can share your feedback about the program at a Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts with hashtag AIR Year End. An exhibition, Dandi Yatra, which is part of the celebrations of the 150th birth anniversary of the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, was inaugurated in New Delhi yesterday. It has been organized by the National Gallery of Modern Art, NGMA, the exhibition will be open for public from 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. on all working days except Mondays and national holidays. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Saira Mustaba. Thank you, Abhishek. A Delhi court remanding Christian Michel, the suspected middleman in the Augusta Westland bribery case, to another seven days in the Enforcement Directorate's custody and imposing restrictions on him for meeting lawyers is one of the stories that finds prominent mention in most of the dailies this morning. The DNA quoting the ED writes, Michelle named Mrs. Sonia and son of Italian lady. The Times of India quotes PM Modi as saying, Loan waivers are lollipops, Congress cheated farmers. The paper adds that the PM indicates government won't rise to Rahul Bate. India to near clean energy goals in 2019, states Financial Express, adding, Renewable energy share in total generation mix to cross 10% in FY20 to add 10 gigawatts to generation capacity. Pakistani among four jesh e muhammad terrorists killed in JNK, reports DNA. Referring to the visit to the holiest Sikh shrine in Pakistan, where Guru Nanak is believed to have spent the last 18 years of his life, Mail Today writes, Pakistan readies Kartarpur entry rules. Triple Talaq bill in Rajya Sabha tomorrow, notes the Tribune. The paper informs that numbers are stacked against the NTA. On the coldest December night in four years on Saturday, Hindustan Times leads. Coldest December night leaves capital shivering. The paper adds that at 2.6 degrees, woman dies at Monday house, Sunday night to be colder, wants IMT. And finally, music retailer HMV faces collapse. Well, the Hindu reports that British music retailer HMV, which was launched by English composer Edward Elgar in 1921 and helped propel the Beatles to fame, collapsed as consumers switched to digital streaming. And with that, it's back to you, Abhishek. Thank you, Saira. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts with people in Monkey Bath program on All India Radio at 11 a.m. Prime Minister to launch several infrastructure projects in Andaman and Nicobar Islands today. Voting begins in Punjab to elect Sarpans and Pans for over 13,000 village panchayats. Bangladesh goes to polls today to elect a new parliament. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina seeks a record fourth term. And in cricket, India beat Australia by 137 runs in the Melbourne Test. And for details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.nic.in. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.